Hi, this is the second video on using Corvex, a geometry plugin developed by Wallworm, specifically targeting game design and level building. In this scene, we previously created a couple objects here. is a single Corvex object controlled by a couple splines. We also have a single texture that is applied to the entire thing. I'm going to apply a new texture to this object that I have in my material editor, and I am then going to turn off this lock all IDs to match these. So I have a multi-material and the way Corvex works is different sides of the geometry automatically get different material IDs. There's also a feature that allows us to change the height of a center of each of these points. So if I turn on this option I can then change and add these uh, roof types to this object and all of them are controlled by this uh, this height spinner here. Add a new spline if I want there we have a new object in the scene and it's matching this and notice that the roof and the faces, all the faces have planar mapping which are going to demonstrate accurately how the how the geometry and material will be mapped when you export to a game engine that requires uh, planar mapping on faces. For example, the source game engine. I'll go, go back to the Corvex object here. Notice that I can change again the U offset and the mapping will uh, tile and uh, match between the different elements. Now places like this isn't exactly what we wanted here, but we can control that later on with other videos. I'll explain those. The U offset, if we wanted to change, or the V offset, I mean, you can see has these kind of uh, controls of making it move up and down. We have some buttons that will align them automatically to the top, the bottom, and when the scale is the same such that the height is the same, the bottom and the top will do the same effect. And left, which will put it back to zero offset. Now if I have a spline in the scene that I don't want to be part of this Corvex object, I can just select that object in this list. When I select it, it will highlight briefly which spline that is. So if I don't want line 2 here in here, I can just remove that and it will no longer be part of this Corvex object. If I want to edit a specific spline, if I right click that spline in the list, it will send me to that spline selection and it will automatically put me at the spline subobject element mode where you can add new splines with the create menu if you want. Or you can go to the vertex level to edit those vertexes. If you want to go back to the Corvex object, you need to get out of sub-element mode of the spline you're working on by clicking the sub-element mode you're currently in or the line and then selecting the geometry of the Corvex and you'll go back to the Corvex object. We're going to stop here and in the next video we'll explore some other features of Corvex.